Tommy Johnson has been severely hurt. This nine-year-old boy was the victim of a mysterious explosion. His parents have no idea what happened. They were fortunate to escape with only minor injuries. You need to have a seat on the waiting room. I'm heading the investigation. The only lead we have so far is shell fragments, which could be from a grenade, I'm told. A grenade? Yes, ma'am. Were there any old shells or military souvenirs in the house? No. No, I never brought home anything like that from post. Could the boy have possibly picked up something when he visited you at work, Sergeant? No, I'm in transportation. I never even see ordnance. But you know, I never talked to Tommy about not picking up shells and dots. Oh, Tom. The investigation will soon confirm that the explosion was caused by a 40 millimeter grenade dud. They'll also learn how, through an unlikely chain of events, this dangerous dud found its way into Tommy's possession. But they will never find out that many years before, Tommy's own father may have unknowingly started the sequence of events that led to this tragedy for his son. Over 200 accidents with military duds are reported each year, many of them occurring outside the line of duty. Although Tommy's accident is not typical, it says a lot about how these deadly duds can make their way into our lives. If we don't take simple precautions. What exactly is a dud? It's any explosive device, a shell, round or rocket, that has failed to detonate after being fired. Duds normally begin and end their life here on a firing range, not far from where they were fired, which is as it should be if they were left alone. But clearly marked signs and even express warning orders from their superiors aren't always enough to discourage some soldiers. It may be thrill-seeking, ignorance of the danger, or just a misguided belief that things always happen to the other guy the majority of accidents occur when military personnel insist on ignoring both regulations and good common sense. The dangers on a range impact area are many. It's possible to step on or trip over unseen ordnance that may still be live. In the majority of accidents though, a dud found on a range or in a training area is deliberately moved. Often it's picked up and examined with the belief that nothing really dangerous would be just lying there. But a dud is one help. thing that must never, help. ever be touched. Help. Come on over here. We need help. Some of the worst accidents have occurred on weekends. Both soldiers and civilians alike often believe Let's that when ranges are shut down on Saturdays and Sundays, it's safe to wander around on them. Nothing could be further from the truth. Tom, wait. Uh, do you think it's safe? <laughs> Come on. Nothing ever happens here on Sunday. It was on this day, two years before Tommy was born, that the seeds of his accident so were sown. I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the army. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, there's a funny kind of flower. Where? Right there. Is it dangerous? Nah, probably just one of our practice rounds. Yeah, we use this kind of thing in training. You want it for a souvenir? No, I wish you'd just throw it away. Okay, take it easy. Hey, I'll show you how we throw a hand grenade. <gasps> you see, it was harmless. <laughs> this young man has foolishly risked his life and that of his girlfriend by violating the first cardinal rule in dealing with duds. Never touch them. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Smile. <laughs> All right. One more. How about this? Beautiful. Great. All right, enough. It's my turn. Okay, just press the button there. Okay, right here? Mm-hmm. It's all set. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Okay. Ah, terrific. Great. What's more, he went on to ignore the second rule 
by failing to report the dud to military authorities. It's a failure he will live to regret. <laughs> Duds can explode at any time. They occur among such a wide variety of explosive devices with so many fusing systems that not even explosive ordnance disposal technicians can be sure when, why, or whether a dud will explode. This collection includes some types that have already killed or seriously injured people. The M106 millimeter heat round. The M72 light anti-tank weapon law round. The 60 millimeter HE mortar round. And the 40 millimeter grenade. It may look small and harmless, but this is a particularly dangerous dud for several reasons. Widely used on several weapons systems, this shell configuration may contain anything from smoke to high explosive. It takes an experienced eye to know which is which. The 40 millimeter is small enough to get lost in the brush and light enough to encourage an attempt to pick it up. Duds are actually much more dangerous than new ammunition. That's because until a round is fired, the fusing inside has not been activated. But once it has been activated, the dud shell could detonate from minor vibration, heat, or even humidity changes. So unlike a new round, a dud is totally unpredictable. Live World War II shells and even explodable Civil War cannonballs are still being unearthed on old battlefields and in people's homes. Live rounds often are unwittingly used as paperweights, playthings, and doorstops. Surprisingly, it's another class of duds that causes the largest number of accidents. These are training simulators. They don't carry the devastating explosive charges of mortar, grenade, or other rounds, but they are capable of severely burning and maiming people due to the fast igniting photoflash powder they're filled with. They can also be duds and must be treated with the same safety measures accorded to all duds. Do not touch or move them. And report their location to authorities so that no one else can be injured. Simulators are used for many training purposes, but there's nothing simulated about the injuries they can cause. Hey, check it out, man. Hey, don't mess with that. It's dangerous. Hey, you gotta have some fun in life. Ah. Ah. Sorry, sorry. Come here. Human nature being what it is, a mud-spattered old shell lying in the weeds is simply not treated with the same respect as a shiny new round that's known to be explosive. Let's follow the unhappy history of just such a dud. After being thrown away by the young soldier, the 40 millimeter lay in the roadside ditch for nearly three years, until a truck happened to break down nearby, and the sergeant in charge happened to see it. Even though he should have known better, he couldn't resist making the same common mistakes as the young man. He didn't leave it alone. He didn't report it to EOD or anyone else. He risked other people's lives. And finally, he decided to take it home. It became an addition to his souvenir collection. But duds, large or small, don't necessarily get less dangerous with age. In some cases, they may become even more sensitive. The dud grenade remained on display in the sergeant's house without incident for four more years. Until he got orders for another post and had to move. Jim, do we have to lug these shells all around the country? They're terrible dust collectors. Besides, I'm sure there's more where we're going. All right, all right. I'll just keep one or two. Oh, great. You've made my day. <laughs> Whoa, honey, that was a close one. You almost blew us all the bits. Oh, Jim. Oh. It's not uncommon for live rounds to turn up in the trash, both on post and off. Sometimes, duds have even survived long, rough rides, only to explode when lightly handled. This total unpredictability is precisely what makes them so dangerous. Miss Rutledge. Yes. May I take some of these comics? Oh, sure, Tommy. Take anything you want. Dinner's ready. 
The authorities will never know exactly what happened in Tommy's room that night. How's she doing now? We're still in the operating room. Nobody's promising us anything. I thought you might like to know that we've pretty much figured out how Tommy got a hold of the grenade. You have? Yes. Apparently, it belonged to a sergeant living down the block from you. He found it out in their range D7 some years ago and brought it home as a souvenir. Well, how did Tommy get a hold of it? Well, the family's moving now, and they decided to throw it out as junk. The sergeant's wife saw Tommy taking some comic books from the trash just before the garbage truck came by. Oh, my God. Lieutenant? Excuse me for a moment. You know, Range D7 is where we went walking a couple of times before we got married. Is that the place where you picked something up and I asked you to throw it away? Yeah, and it was a 40 millimeter grenade. I remember that. You don't think it was the same one, do you? No, it couldn't. It would be almost impossible. I should have told the MPs about it. Tom, don't torture yourself. We're never going to know for sure anyway. I know that. That's what's gonna haunt me. Sergeant Johnson should have handled it differently. Let's take a look at how things could have gone that day. <laughs> That's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, there's a funny kind of flower. Where? Right there. Oh, Tom, wait. I don't think you should pick it up. <laughs> That's the last thing I'm gonna do. Come on. Those things can go off just from footsteps. What are you doing? I'm gonna mark the spot so that the EOD people can find it when they come. Marking the spot is a good idea, but don't put the marker so close that it might set off the dud. And don't use a marker so conspicuous Let's that it might attract EOD. people to the spot. A call to the MPs is usually sufficient to get an EOD team in action. Often they'll request that the finders stay at the location until they arrive to make sure they can locate the dud. Right. Yeah, I'll wait there until you get there. Great, thank you. Come on, let's go. EOD personnel are trained to remove or dispose of duds. It's their primary EOD? job. Yeah, On good. arrival, he will job. conduct an assessment of the situation grenade. to decide if he there. can remove the dud. 40 millimeter grenades are notoriously sensitive. Most often they will be destroyed where they lie. If these EOD professionals treat a dud with this much respect, and wouldn't consider moving it by hand, you can be sure it's not something for you to be toying with. Army regulations, in fact, clearly state that duds will not be recovered, handled, or otherwise tampered with by any individual except explosive ordnance disposal personnel. No dud, be it a grenade, rocket, or rifle round simulator, or even blasting cap, should ever be touched. And that message needs to be conveyed to every member of the family. What's more, anyone finding a dud anywhere has a moral, if not legal, responsibility to report it to the proper authorities, be it the police, MPs, or EOD personnel. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! If you don't, if you let it lie there like a time bomb for the next person to come along, you've only done half the job. And you may have condemned someone like Tommy to eventual tragedy. Well, that thing could have killed us.